Hey guys, Bobo the Vulture is back for more Extreme Warfare Revenge with Adam Ryland. With normal buttons and bows. It is Sunday, March the 1st. I've already adjusted up my merchandising level. Haven't adjusted up my advertising level right now and nobody seems to think we need to. We recently made some new hires of uh, yeah, 1.20. We are definitely moving up. Also, coincidentally, yeah, you can't get a, uh, that's too bad. I wanted to get, to, to take a look at the EWR Revenge profile of some of our workers, but I guess you can't do that unless... You go to meeting and ask Sophie. Like, uh, what do they say about Ms. Vanessa now? She is charismatic American, 30-year-old, a manager currently working for VCW as a face. She's now widely considered to be one of the best managers around today. We have elevated her to that status. Let's uh, see about Phil Woods. Phil Woods, can I see a profile? He's also widely considered to be one of the best managers around today. Because I'm a star maker. Ha ha. All right, speaking of star making, um, we need to give some thought to our next few uh, feuds. I should probably get, uh, let's see, Louis Moxie and Robbie Moxie both in here doing fun stuff. So I'm going to put them in an angle with... Uh, well, let's see, actually. Yeah, Lazarus and Onyx are honestly, at this point, almost too over to be a uh, to be an amazing tag team. I also really wish that I could sign Lazarus to a written contract. Anyway, so let's go into the search criteria here. How many guys do we have that are 80 plus? Drill Clark, obviously he's 91. Scotty Mac is 84. Onyx is 82. And Doc Dean is 81. Have Onyx and Doc Dean done a feud? Joe Clark and Scotty Mack have done a feud, but, uh, you know, they may have to do another one. Eventually, somebody's got to take this belt off of Joe Clark. I mean, it's just got to happen. Who is our man to do that? Is it Doc Dean? Is it Onyx? Is it Scotty Mac? I could see any of these guys, really. What does is, what is Vanessa say? Or what does Sophie say? Sophie says Jarrell Clark makes a good champion. Previously, she had suggested giving it to somebody else, but... We have built up the image of this belt in a major way. This title is vacant. Who does she say to give it to? To the Strong Brothers. 
Okay. Interesting thoughts, these. All right, so what I want to do, actually, I'm going to leave Onyx out of the rotation for feuds for another period of time, because at the end of this, now that the tag feud is over, I can actually have a four-way tag team dance at the end of, uh, you know, the next big event. And give it to, uh, you know, give the tag belts up. So they can have a big day. so they can have a big match and then they won't be missed from the four way tag team battle royal at the next event. So that'll be something for the Strong Brothers, for Dark Souls, and for Fast and Furious, and for the Moxies to do. And then after that we can start having tag team feuds between like the Moxie Brothers and Fast and Furious or um, the Strongs. That does mean that then, uh, let's see, minimum overness of what about 75. We go all the way down to 75. Well, then Todd Sexton also ends up in that realm. Could have Todd Sexton wrestle Doc Dean. Have Todd Sexton and Doc Dean had a feud? Don't think they have, because Todd Sexton just turned heel. Would Todd Sexton and Doc Dean have a good feud? Probably reasonably good. <laughs> then Scott and Mac can have another feud with Jarrell Clark. These two are very evenly matched. Would turn out some good matches, probably. So let's go ahead and make those our... Go make those two our current mainline feuds. Um, we are going to have... Drell Clark versus Scotty Mac. It's been done. But see, the heat on it is already insane. Everybody is crazy about this one. This may be the time I finally move the belt away from Drell Clark. But we shall see. Then let's also do a few between Todd Sexton and Doc Dean. That feud's got a lot of heat, too. This may be the first time I've, I can remember starting a feud that had 99 heat to begin with. Um, I don't know whether it will stay there or go up or go down in the uh, month leading up to the pay-per-view, but uh, it's pretty hot stuff. Anything else we want to do further down the card? Let's take a look at the suggestions that we have. Got Sushi Takamura and Todd Sexton? Yeah. Well. Trent Baker versus Sebastian Knight. Let's take a look at these two. Trent Baker and Sebastian Knight. I honestly don't think that they would have a good match. Trent Baker versus Sebastian Knight. All of these other things are... Uh, Let's see, Robert Thompson. Robert Thompson's gone. Whoever he was, he's not here anymore. Let's see. So, Cade Sadal is already almost 40 over. What if we put him in a feud with Majik? sort of fed Majik to him. Or didn't put him in a feud right now. And got my other two new hires, Matt Classic and Seth Knight, into a feud with each other. 
So those two are very good. By the way, Mac Classic needs Miss Vanessa as a manager. Seth Knight versus Matt Classic. There you go. Not very over, because these guys themselves are not very over. We'll fix that. Now, what else do we want to arrange here in our... Dysfunction, 56 over. Black Dragon 69 over. He has the sexiest overness out of all of our wrestlers. Who is in his ballpark that is not doing anything right now? I mean, Enigma is, but I'm not going to make Enigma wrestle. I feel like Takamura and Black Dragon have wrestled before, haven't they? I'm not sure how great their um, how great they would sort of blend. There's the Reigns's. Hmm. Have Black Dragon and Takamura had a feud before? I certainly feel like they have. Hmm. I know I said I wasn't going to start putting any guys that were under verbal contract into feuds again. But I do want to give Black Dragon a feud. These two guys are pretty over. That's a pretty good arrangement right now. We could add more feuds if we wanted to, but honestly, I kind of feel like, considering the, the size of a roster we have right now, we don't really want to get too much crazier than this. This will also give us actually more than enough matches for the next uh, few, or, you know, for the next medium-sized event. Though at this rate, I'm beginning to wonder whether or not we should start trying big events again. But considering I just spent all of our money on improving the training camp facilities, maybe I will hold off. Yeah. And there's nothing else we really need to do before the next show, right? Because I adjusted all of our merchandising spending and everybody's happy with our TV show. So I think we're in pretty good shape. Let's just fast forward to Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. That's what I say. Katsushi Takamura will have been hired already. Wow, there was a wave of hiring by someone. Because Canadian Golden Combat rose to national level. They signed Chris Sabin, Jorge Estrada, Mike Kenner, Kevin Kelly, Brian Hebner, Christabel Wolfson. Oh man, they signed Scott Demore? I didn't know that that was even possible to do. Scott Demore, he's like the coach of Team Canada. Team Canada was a thing that existed for a while. Tommy Swade has been hired away from someone, and Billy Real. Let's clear them all. Let's look at other staff. Right, let's go back. Let's include staff who work for other promotions. I just want to see what Scott Demore does. I'm going to guess he's a road agent, maybe a trainer. Oh, he's a writer. 
He doesn't want to negotiate. Oh, man, I, I totally want Scott Demore to work for my company. Ah, oh, love Scott Demore. Ah, well. Scott Demore, the master of the moralizer. And, you know, he's kind of a big guy, but he'll still do a moonsault on you. I love guys like that. Big, huge dudes that still do moonsaults. That's just fun. All right, let's hop the next day. Let's, um... Let's go ahead and do an authority angle. It's going to be an authority angle. One-on-one -on -one match tonight between Scotty Mack and Jarrell Clark. The main event will be a title match for the VCW Championship belt. I'm going to put Scotty Mack first. Because I'm adhering to tradition. You introduce the challenger first. BCW championship belt. Jarrell Clark is going to defend his belt. But he's going to do it by cheating. There is no aftermath. Actually, no. I tell you what. Drell Clark will win this cleanly. He will, in this particular match, just get the better of Scotty Mack. But then Jarrell Clark is going to hit him after shaking hands. Because Scotty Mack is going to try and show him any respect. And Jarrell Clark's just not going to have it. There we go. Let's also start this show. They match a one-on-one -on -one match, single styles, between Seth Knight and Matt Classic. There is no title on the line. This is going to go to Seth Knight. Seth Knight is going to get a clean win. And then he's going to run away. How's that? He doesn't want to deal with it. And this is Seth Knight's debut, but it's already to continue a feud that he's having. That's the confidence I have in these two superstars. Show enough, the Shogun of Harlem. Now then. What if I went ahead... Nope. Didn't mean to make this an interview. It meant to make this an authority angle. You guys know. Gonna have Enigma show up. And it's gonna be a one-on-one -on -one for the next big event. And that one-on-one -on -one is going to be... Doc Dean versus Todd Sexton. Because that is the feud I have going, right? Yes. Todd Sexton versus Doc Dean. Doc Dean versus Todd Sexton. Whichever. We all know what it is. Now then. 
Who should we have Doc Dean wrestle this week? Maybe a Lazarus. Those two. Those two could probably put on a nice show. Just going to be a nice, solid one on one singles match between Lazarus and Doc Dean. And no title on the line. It's going to be a win for Lazarus. Because wouldn't you know it, but friggin' Todd Sexton runs in and interferes. And after that, Todd Saxon is going to keep on keeping on with his assaults because he's just a weirdo. And that's going to continue their feud. Then Black Dragon versus Katsushi Takamura. Who would put on a good match with Black Dragon? Let's see. Now, what if we had Majik and Takamura in a fight? There you go. Just a match, a one on one styles, singles between. Majik and Katsushi Takamura. There's no title on the line. I'll even give this win to Majik. Because Black Dragon is going to come in and do the interference. No aftermath beyond that. That's just for feuding's sake. Now then. Let's go ahead and have an interview. A single worker with manager. It's going to be Phil Woods with Jarrell Clark targeting Scotty Mac. This is stuff that's happened in the past, and yet, here we are reliving it. What if we did an interview here? Single worker with manager. This will be Miss Vanessa with Scotty Mac as well. Actually, I don't know if we need to put that much English on this particular feud. They're still probably going to be just fine. Let's go back here. Maybe this is the part where I have this is the part where I have Phil Woods show up on behalf of Todd Sexton. And they will talk about Doc Dean. To continue that feud. And then maybe what else can happen here is this can be an interview, single worker with manager, 
it will be Phil Woods with... No, 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 it'll be Ms. Vanessa with Takamura. And they'll be talking about Black Dragon. That old Black Dragon's got me under a spell. Yay! Continued segment. Alright. Beyond that, let's see. We could try and push the Seth Knight Matt Classic feud a little bit, but I honestly feel like maybe they should gain more overness before they, we start trying to make people care about them in interviews. Um, they're going to get overness just from having these good matches. I'm kind of okay with just them, you know, doing a little bit of fighting back and forth. Um, so, what I will do with this slot instead is have an interview. Single worker with manager. This is going to be Phil Woods with Black Dragon. And they are going to be targeting Takamura. So, this whole segment in between these two matches is going to be a call and response about that feud. Then up here... Hmm... What else do I want to do here? Could have Doc Dean get talked up. Yeah, we'll advance those three heavily for this one. Single worker with manager. Ms. Vanessa for Doc Dean. Doc Dean. Woo! Um, talking about Todd Sexton for their feud. There. And this segment is over! Let's start the show. Nick began to Overness. He's doing pretty well for Overness. This match, uh, yeah, I was about to say, I expected to have a high match quality rating and a pretty poor crowd reaction. So, definitely got that. Our whip. And Matt Classic runs into the referee. Hmm. Are my referees low skill? Is that what's going on right now? Phil Woods backstage with Black Dragon. Phil Woods building up that feud. That was not a great segment. Oh well. Miss Vanessa and Takamura. Very good segment. Majik versus Katsushi Takamura was only a 61% match, but I guess I honestly don't expect that much more out of Majik anymore. He's not our most talented wrestler, and considering I tried to push him down the card to reflect that and he got all mad, he's just not wrestling up to his... Uh, maximum potential. But maybe uh, we get a little bit more uh, victory under his belt or a little bit more uh, ring time, he'll uh, he'll start to forgive. And if he doesn't, we will drop him all the way down to jobber status, and once he's mad about that, we will offer him his release and he will take it, allowing, him to, allowing us to remove him without having a penalty to our uh, contract. Phil Woods backstage with Todd Sexton. Okay. Oh, an 82%. See, our interviews are really what's helping us out here. Although Lazarus versus Doc Dean was a great match with a good crowd reaction anyway. So these guys, they're high up enough on the card that people get really excited when they see those guys out. Drill Clark lost over us from doing this uh, interview segment. So to be careful about that sort of thing, I guess. Once you get up into the 90s, doing pretty much anything that's not super cool... Wow, it's an 89% overall segment. 92% match quality that people really cared about. So, that's a great single segment. Possibly the best match segment we've ever had. Now, obviously we had an interview from Ms. Vanessa in the same, in the same show that you know, was nearly as, as, as good, or was exactly as good. Katsushi wants to be higher up the card. Ha ha lol. Doc Dean wants to be higher up the card. Robbie Moxie and Memphis Reigns would like to wrestle together, and they will. In the future! George Galadsky has been released from NWAW. Mr. Black has been released from NWAW. 
All right. Out of curiosity, who are these people? Andy Anderson, you're a decent brawler. What about this Mr. Black character? Also a decent brawler. Missy Bing. Huh. Is that a new wrestler? I don't think we've seen this particular person before. You're known to be easy to work with. Miss Natural. Hmm, fairly Midland wrestler. But has been criticized for being lazy in the ring. Mitch Paradise. Very average. Well liked and respected. Well, that's cool. Mr. Ulala. Ulala. And muscles. Oh, it's Mustafa Saeed. He's nuts. He was uh, one half of the uh, popular ECW tag team, the Gangstas. Um, although it does not seem to make any specific mention of that either. He uh, wrestled with New Jack. Is New Jack out here anywhere? There's New Jack. So yeah, it was New Jack and Mustafa. Oh, because New Jack is apparently now tag team of Shark Boy and New Jack. He has an open contract with Canadian Golden Combat. He's got the reputation as a bit of a troublemaker. He doesn't like John Cronus or the Sandman and hates Vic Grimes. Interesting. He'll do high spots and he's menacing. He doesn't think our promotion is big enough for him. He'd want $51,000 per appearance, which is, you know, just as well. I was only really considering him because he has a high charisma score. I would have made him a manager or a non-wrestling person anyway. Um, speaking of non-wrestlers, uh, somebody had asked. Well, let me check my short list here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And Sanjay Dutt is unemployed, but he's touring with Toriumon. Shrug. But he wants more money now. No, he doesn't want any more money now. So, And if he uh, came back now, he would ask to be mid-card rather than as high up as he used to be. I see how it is. Anthony Bartlett Jr. is on a written contract with ROH. I've been getting requests to potentially uh, bring Anthony Bartlett Jr. back. He's not really good. I mean, 69 was a decent charisma score when we were a backyard fed um, to have somebody that would go out and do stuff. But... Uh, he would want a 15, yeah. He's got a superstar look. He could be an announcer. He's got the fun. He's got a lot of special attributes, but, uh, yeah, I just, he, he does not, he's not a talent of our, of our level anymore. We have, we have risen above what would work for him. Chris Jericho, greatest. Spiffy Sean Styles heading to the top. Taka Michinoku, he's pretty cool. Brad Attitude talked about Shania Twain, ER storylines, and sex, I guess. Coachman's Dance of the Day is the Rikishi. You look flip. It's a dance for if you are looking fly that day. Hydro is in demand. I could see that. I'm pretty sure Hydro is Jay Lethal, and Jay Lethal, I think, is the champion of ROH right now. Um, Chris Styles could be destined for greatness. Xander Kowalski, Missy Bang, Day. Oh, those are all the, the recent additions to the roster circulation. Shawn Michael may be leaving. Could Conan leave NWA TNA? Sid Vicious in trouble. He is uh, close to being fired after his relationship with Ivory ended. Okay. 
Sid Vicious and Ivory. That's what the game is suggesting exists. Jerry Taylor, family friendly show. Jamie. T <laughs> Look at this shit, guys. Look at what happens to us. Their key assets are Christopher Daniels, who is the most talented performer on their roster, and Jamie Dundee, the most bankable star in terms of drawing power, because I was pushing Jamie Dundee. He took his overness, brought it to Canadian Golden Combat, and left me high and dry. That's right, Jamie Dundee. Never forgive, never forget. There's the number four promotion in North America. Takuma Chinoku is an amazing technical wrestler. Right up there, I guess, with Scoot Andrews and Chris Jericho. Mike Tanay, the best wrestler. Who is the next person that could break through? Is it Scoot Andrews? Will he make it? I don't know. Who is the king of the independents? Hydro. The greatest female worker, Kumiko Indohara. Okay. And our own website. BCW, rising in popularity. We get good TV ratings. Will people be fighting their nemeses the next show? And we have a list of brawlers. John Phoenix. All right. Tell you what, let's first, let's look at John Phoenix, because apparently we are looking at him. That guy's okay. He's got uh, nicely rounded stats, so you could maybe put him in a match with anybody and he'd have a moderate match out of it, but probably never a great one. And he's got charisma enough to sort of carry himself. He's got a lot of friends in the business, including Jerry Lynn. It's nice. And he could be a trainer. There's John Cronus, who is apparently hated by some. Johnny Jette. Pretty skilled. Well liked and respected. He's friends with Mustafa Saeed. Who knew? You want 15 grand? You are out your mind, my friend. Now then. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Okay. Kitty. Yeah, not great. Kumiko Indohara. Interesting. Kumiko Indohara is a very good technical wrestler. Yep, that wasn't the button I meant to click. I meant to go find Hydro, not Bushwhacker Butch. Though interesting, Bushwhacker Luke is not here. I wonder if Bushwhacker Luke retired and Butch is just out there on his own now. There's Chris Hero. I would certainly consider signing Chris Hero. Chris Hero is touring with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Chris Styles. Wow, there's another person I would like to sign. There's Chris Seidel, who is apparently part of the Suicidal Strike with Cade Seidel, but appears to be the less talented of the two. And there's Christopher Daniels, who is a very talented all-rounder, and a charismatic guy to boot. Um, but he's touring with New Japan and is also has open contracts with three other feds, all of which are larger than us. So there's no way that he'd be signing with us anyway. How much money would he want? 70 grand. Good for him. You know what? Good for him. He has found his price. Damien 666? Nope. Oh, wait, there was Gato. I think I saw him recently. 
Wow, very charismatic, but does not speak English, so that can be a problem. Oh, that was Jean Snitsky. He hates babies. It was an angle, folks. Glenn Goberti has an open contract with Canadian Golden Combat, and uh, not much else going on with the guy. He doesn't feel our promotion is big enough for him. He's the Disco Inferno, by the way. Um, Haku. Hell yes, Haku. He is known to be easy to work with. He is the master of the Tonga Death Grip. He is a blood relative with a million different people because um, there is a, you know, there is a, a wrestling family that comes out of Samoa that just there's a lot of yeah, Rosie, Jamal, Rikishi, Samu, The Rock. Hardcore homo angel. Not one of their relatives. Just a guy that's here. Halloween, another Mexican guy. Tag teams with team at 666. The headhunter is headhunter A and headhunter B. Interesting. Reputations as troublemakers. Well, we don't need to have any of that with our organization, now do we? And there is Hydro. Hydro is unemployed. It has an amazing charisma score. Pretty good. Pretty good stats otherwise. Not amazing. He'll do eye spots and he has a superstar look. How much does he he wants forty grand? I'm not willing to pay him forty grand. Ikudo Hadaka could break up to the next level. Man. What if you agreed to take a, a pay cut of half and go under written contract for three years? What about 25? No? Okay. You know what? That's fair, Jay Lethal. You, you, do you. I could just come down here and hire up all of their good per their their good good personalities. I could if I wanted to be a bad man. All their good personalities that are not wrestling for someone else. And that didn't want a lot of money. Lazy in the ring, huh? Guys, well liked and respected. I like and respect you too, Darren Smythe. There's Havoc. Lil Ricky. Alright, anyways. I am just babbling on at this point. I tell you what, this is plenty to have done for this particular episode. Let's take a look at how the feuds have gone. Okay, this feud bumped up a little bit in uh, tension. I feel like these have all had a little little increase. Let's actually take a look real quick. See, Matt Classic, yeah, he's he's moved up to 20. Seth Knight is up to 25. So, uh, yeah. These two need to have a back and forth, like best of 10, test of knowledge. And uh, I think that's going to do wonders for them. Let's see, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Let's skip ahead in the week, and then when we come back, uh, we will have our next exciting television show and our next exciting episode of Let's Play Extreme Warfare Revenge. This is Boba the Vulture. I want to thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see all of you next time. Well, let's take a look at the email here. But up, but up. Samoa Joe, open contract. Dixie has been signed to a written contract. Oh, there you go. Out of curiosity now, who was Dixie and what was Dixie's thing? Hmm, pretty good. Good, high-speed guy. Yeah, well, 
Anyways, folks, thanks very much for watching. I will see you in the future. Bye.